right here and right now, this banking crisis is not going to go away. And certainly by lending a bunch of big banks money and put, then putting it onto other people's balance sheets, none of this is going to work. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have the CEO of Real Vision, Raul Powell, discussing the current banking crisis and predicts that the next leg lower in the banks will set off alarms and lead to the need for emergency rate cuts by the Federal Reserve. Similar to past banking crises, Powell emphasizes the fragility of the banking system and the need for caution and preparation in the face of a total system collapse. Raul notes that quantitative easing can prevent bankruptcies by stopping the collateral from falling, and while this mechanism will not lead to a crisis as severe as the one in 2008, he warns that we may only be seeing the beginning. Let's get right into the interview with Raul Pell as he talks about the inevitable collapse that's coming and what to do when everything happens all at once. If you enjoy the content we do here, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Let's get right into the video. Ton of banking crisis in my life. The outcome is always the same 100% of the time. Emergency rate cuts as fast as you can. Now, we're not there yet, but once we get the next leg lower in these in these banks, they didn't close well today, mm. and the bond market, bond yields, you know, 30, uh, 10 years closed on its lows. Once we see the next leg of that, which is why I've got the buy bonds, wear diamonds t-shirt, because the only thing you do in a situation like this is buy bonds. Um, once it makes the next leg lower, that's going to set the alarms off. Um, we've got to get through the Fed meeting. Um, I also, which is very controversial, I'm very bullish equities because more cowbell. If you debase the currency, um, equities go up. So I'm very bullish crypto, very bullish bonds, very bullish technology stocks in particular. They have to steepen the yield curve as fast as possible. So I think they cut rates two or 300 basis points uh, in pretty short order. So I'm talking into late summer, September or so. We will go into recession. We've, Andreas and I have been flagging this forever. It was you know, in our forward looking indicators for a long time. We go into recession. My guess is we come out the other side, i.e. we hit bottom maybe this quarter or next quarter, and then we come out the other side. The other side's going to be slow. Trend rate of GDP is slow, and it's going to be ugly and messy. But right here and right now, this banking crisis is not going to go away. And certainly by lending a bunch of big banks money and put, then putting it onto other people's balance sheets, none of this is going to work. It just smells. The whole thing smells. And it's going to have to unravel in the age-old way which is everyone's going to start panicking about the insolvencies in these firms, whether it's deposit flights or their, their books. And in the end, the Fed has to come with a cowbell. If your collateral is going down, you go bust. But what QE does is make your collateral go up optically in price. And so it stops the bankruptcies. Doesn't mean you repair the P&Ls or anything else. But if your collateral doesn't fall, you're OK. So I don't think it can ever get as bad as 2008 using this particular mechanism. There's an outside chance for sure. I don't think so. I don't know. Andreas, what do you think? Well, uh, you're touching upon an important point here because what the Fed did last Sunday was essentially to backstop the U.S. Treasury market with this new lending program. They've been telling banks since 2008 um, that the U.S. Treasury market is the safest in the world and therefore they need to back it up. Uh, they've been telling banks to hold treasuries in their uh, high quality liquid asset portfolios uh, it's, it's simply regulation. They need to hold these assets and therefore the Fed needed to step in to ensure that uh, the treasury market functioned. Uh, so in that sense, it kind of resembles what happened in the UK uh, during the autumn last year that um, the central bank simply had to step in to backstop the core functioning uh, of the yield curve and the core functioning of the treasury market locally. Uh, and therefore, I, uh, I perfectly agree with you, Raul, that uh, since the Fed has now backstopped the US treasury market, it will not turn into a collateral crisis. What it will turn into is a major move 
of deposits from small and medium-sized banks to a very few large banks. So we will end up with a US banking system that will look a lot like the European banking system after this crisis is over. Uh, and I can guarantee you by watching the price action in European banks and after having worked for one of the biggest Northern European banks that it is not a bullish scenario for <laughs> large caps. <laughs> Raul Pal warns against betting against the bond market, which is currently screaming warnings. He highlights that if some of the banks lending money to the Fed go bankrupt, it will turn into QE automatically, which could be the end game. Powell emphasizes that the Federal Reserve must backstop the U.S. Treasury market to prevent a collateral crisis from occurring. So economic growth, we're going into recession. Um, I think it's more like 1990 recession, which was pretty nasty. It didn't. I mean, the stock market fell 20 percent that time. Bond yields collapsed. The banking system was creaking at the seams. Commercial real estate took four years to recover. Jobs took a long time to recover. I think that's what we're doing. But I think it's, again, a lot of people are looking at 2008 or 2000, saying it's going to be something like this. I don't think it is. I think it's a, it's a traditional recession with credit contraction that creates an overhang in some parts of the economy. So I think we go down fast, take a long time to recover because commercial real estate is stuck on all of these small banks' books. And I was sitting down with the commercial real estate portfolio manager for one of the biggest pension funds in the United States three days ago. And he's like, some of this stuff is never going to get used and never going to be sold. They're going to literally have to bulldoze it down. He said it's already seeing it in many cities in the US, mm. is that people just aren't going back to work. Look at Real Vision. Maggie, when's the last time you went to the office? In New York, we're stuck in a lease. We reduced it from 65 people to a 35 person lease and still two or three people go to the office. He, even here in Cayman, it's only a five minute journey for us. There's two people in the office. Mm. Nope, it's finished, they're stuck. Uh, and that loss, those losses are gonna have to get eaten by the pension system because they own it. I mean, I've been calling for the oil to get 60 bucks and I think I might be optimistic. Let's see. Now, we all understand the supply shortages, but demand wins every time. Everyone forgets this. Uh, the great conversation with, um, as ever, Dwight Anderson, who's like the world's best commodity hedge fund manager. And he's like, yeah, you know, I'm bullish on oil on a structural supply story, but you've got to factor in demand. And in a recession, nobody uses oil. You know, we've got stuff like excess inventories everywhere. So that means I, uh, industrial production slows down. And if there's excess inventories, then industrial production in Asia slows down as well. So there's going to be less demand for oil. I mean, all of the commodity prices now en masse are down year on year. They're negative. So that's deflation. I do not see a single evidence, shred of evidence to suggest that inflation is sticky. I think it's a false narrative um, and it's going to get taken out and shot over this next few months. Raul predicts that the current economic situation will lead to a recession similar to the 90s rather than the financial crisis of 2008 or 2000. He also notes that commercial real estate may take a long time to recover, along with the decrease in demand for oil, which will affect commodity prices and lead to deflation. Powell believes that inflation is not a concern and thinks it's a false narrative that will be disproven over the next few months. What do you think about Raul Powell's prediction for the current banking crisis, the Fed's role in the coming bailouts, and where the market will land in 2023? comment down below. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is Library of Wealth. We'll see you in the next video.